Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to our Arabic class. We are doing the Medina Arabic course book one and we are starting tonight on lesson number 18. So without any delays, let's begin. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Now let's, let's, this, this is a dars thamina ashara, the 18th lesson. It's one of the important integral lessons because it's the first time we'll be touching on this point, which is to put it in a nutshell, we're dealing with a dual form. Now, unlike in English, in English, you've got singular, you've got plural. But in Arabic, you've got singular, you've got dual, and you've got plural. Now, we did touch on duals somewhat when we did that uh, tiny booklet, uh, Ma'ir, the Arabic uh, pronouns. So you would have had some uh, indication and some uh, access to what the dual form of Arabic is like. But now, uh, tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we are actually entering it in a an official capacity. So let's begin. He starts off as a discussion between the teacher and some of his students. So, Al-Mudarrisu, Kam akhan laka ya Muhammadu? Kam akhan laka ya Muhammadu? The, the teacher is asking, how many brothers do you have, O Muhammad? First thing to keep in mind, this is the word akhun. Kam means how many. So make notes of this. It's uh, important things. You're always going to use it throughout your life. So kam means how many. Ach is the word achun. We did achi, acha, achuhu, etc., etc., etc. So when you are asking brothers, uh, you know, in the, in the plural form or whatever it is, any plural that you're asking, how many cars have you got? How many houses have you got? You'd, in English, we say houses, cars, brothers in a plural form, not in Arabic. So, akhun is singular. When you add it with the word kam, then it gets this alif on the end here. So, it, it not kam akhun, but kam akhan. And you would think the kha would be like normal with a uh, fathatain on it. But no, words which are masculine in this manner, they get a an this addition of an alif. This alif is not here to show duality. It's still singular. It's just that he's in a state of having a fatha. So it gets the alif with the fatha uh, on it. You can do that in, in further detail as we go on. But for now, keep that in mind. So he's uh, so if you're asking how many brothers, uh, how many uh, fathers, well, nowadays you can actually ask that question because uh, so, so many people are uh, gay, LBGT, and all these sort of stuff. So, how many brothers, how many sisters, uh, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, how many cars, how many houses, how many pins, how many whatever, whatever, whatever that you're asking, you will always use the singular form. So, come baitan laka, come, uh, for example, kalaman laka. You won't say come aklam. You won't use the plural form like that. You'd use it in the singular form. So, kam uh, ikhwatun. You wouldn't use it in that way. You would say, kam akhan laka. How many brother, brothers? You're using singular, you're intending plural. So, how many brothers do you have? Laka belonging to you, O Muhammad. Kam akhan laka ya Muhammadu. How many brothers do you have, O Muhammad? And Muhammadun, Muhammad replies now saying, li akhun wahidun. Remember, once again, we learned previously that uh, body parts uh, and uh, family uh, ties, uh, uh, these type of people, you use the word the lam, li. You don't say indi. Indi, if, if you are talking about how many cars have you got, you'd use indi. But when you're talking about family uh, relations, then you use li. So, li akhun wahidun. Li Akhun wahidun. I, for me, meaning I have akhun, a brother, wahidun. I have one brother. I have one brother. And then he says, wakam uhtan laki, laka. Akhun uhtun. Uhtun is becoming uhtan. Akhun becomes akhan. That's all that's changing. And Alif is coming on the end. Uhtan instead of uhtun, uhtan. Akhun, akhan. That's all that's basically changing. Wakam uhtan laka. 
like I said, singular form, singular form. You always ask with a singular form. Welcome, Uhtan Laka, and how many sisters do you have? So Muhammad replies and he says, Li Uhtani. Li Uhtani. Here's our first duel. I have two sisters. Uhtun, Uhtani, Akhawatun. Plural forms obviously change according to the word and the gender and stuff of that sort. But singular form, uhtun. Dual form, uhtani. Now the ani, ani, as you can see here, this is generally the sign of duality. So, hadani, qalamani, mudarrisani, muhammadani, etc., etc. So, ani, the alif and noon is the alif and noon of duality. So, li, just look at this word. Scratch this out here and you just see the word uhtun, singular. So, to make it dual, uhtani. You got akhun. Take the, the, like this, if this is the way, you just got the word akhun. Okay, let's not use akhun because akhun is slightly different because of having one, two letters. So, when you change it to the duality, a dual form, then it's got to add an additional wow in there. So it's not akhani, it's akhawani. But we'll do that later on. So anyway, just keep that in mind. So li ukhtani, I have two sisters. al mutari so the teacher now says, kam ajalatan lidarrajati ya hamidun. Kam ajalatan lidarrajati ya hamidu. Okay, so the teacher is still speaking to Muhammad and he asks him, Kam ajalatan lidarajati? How many ajalas are there on the daraja? Now, what is the, the daraja? We did do it previously. Daraja means a bicycle, and ajala means a, a wheel. So, how many wheels are there? How many wheels does the bicycle have? Oh, Hamid, in other words. How many wheels are there on a bicycle, or Hamid? And Hamid replies, Laha ajalatani. Ajalatun ajalatani. Ajalatani. Ani. Ajalatun. And you're just adding the ani on. So, laha. Why are we saying laha? Because the rajatun is a feminine word. So, lahu, li, lana, laha. Be belonging to it belong there are two tires belonging to it that's how it works two two tires belonging to it it being feminine word the raja laha ajalatani it has two tires it has two tires like i say this is an integral lesson so Take notes, or else you will end up falling behind as we move forward. Al Mudarisu, Kam Aidan Fisanati Ya Zakaria. Kam Aidan Fisanati Ya Zakaria. How many Aids are there in the year of Zakaria? How many Aids are there? So Zakaria says, Fisanati, the year Aid, you know Aid already. So Fisanati Aidani. Aidun Aidani. We're just taking the word Aid. Don't look at the Alif over here. That Alif is here because of Kam. So it is the word Aidun Aidani. Uh, Ajalatun Ajalatani. Uhtun Uhtani. So to change words from singular to dual is the easiest thing in the world. So you can tell whether it's a feminine word like this or the Tamar Buta, but still it becomes Ajalatani. And when it is a a uh, masculine word like the word Aidun, once again, Aidani. So, singular to plural, dual, very easy. Fisanati Aidani. They are in the year, there are two Aids. Huma, they are. Huma is the dual form, once again. Huma, those two, meaning, what are those two Aids? Huma, Aidul Fitri, wa Aidul Abha. Those two. Those two Eids, in other words, that we are referring to, are Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Fitr, and Eid al-Adha. So those are the two Eids in the year. 
Now the teacher speaks on al mudarrisu Ya Ibrahimu, Abuka Tajirun Kabirun, Kam Matjaran Aindahu. Your, oh Ibrahim, your father is a big uh, businessman. Or, oh, you know, like, yeah, you can say it businessman. You can call it a uh, trader, you know, whatever you want to, different translations you want to give it. But at the end of the day, when you break it down from the word tijara, tij a, a tajir is one who does tijara. So, uh, in other words, a tajir is the one who does business. Okay, maybe that don't make it exactly in the best uh, of uh, sentences, but uh, examples at least, I should say. But nonetheless, you understand how it works. So your father, he's not asking him, he's telling him, oh, Ibrahim, your father is a big businessman. What is a matjar? See the word tajir, tijara, matjar. You will understand how this works as we go further in Arabic to understand how you got a masjid, a place of uh, to make sajda, which is a place for salah. Majjar is a place of tijara. Majjar, a place of tijara, where, which is where a tajir is. So a majjar means like a, what we would say a shop. How many shops? How many stores? How many department stores? Whichever way you want to translate it. So kam majjaran indahu. You know, you can't say, you know, you may be thinking lahu, but here you use the word inda. Remember, li and lahu, laha, etc. When you were referring to uh, body parts and stuff of the sort. So you, while it is acceptable, you can see here how many stores are there by him. Because it's not in his possession, as in something you put in your pocket but anyway nonetheless come matjaran aindahu how many shops does he have so ibrahim the, he replies he says aindahu matjarani kabirani kabirun kabirani matjarun matjarani that's how it's basically working everything is just becoming ani so aindahu matjarani kabirani like you can see from the sentence when they are well, like you can see the, the uh, Mosuf and Sifa, they got to correspond in uh, number as well. So we're talking about two shops. So the, the description of it has got to be dual as well. So Macharani, Kabirani. Masculine, masculine, feminine, feminine, uh, singular, singular, dual, dual, plural, plural. That's how it works. So Aindahu, Macharani, Kabirani. He has two big shops. Okay, now the teacher uh, turns to the next student. He says, uh, Al Mudariso, Kam nafi the tan fi hurfatika ya ismailo. Kam nafi the tan. Nafi the tun, we did this word before, it means a window. Kam nafi the tan. How many windows are there fi hurfatika in your room? Hurfatun, room. Hurfatika, fati is because of fi, it gets the kasra on hurfati. So, kam nafi the tan. Fi ghurfatika ya Ismailo. How many windows are in your room, O Ismail? So Ismail replies, he says, Fiha nafidatani, nafidatani, nafidatun, nafidatani. So in my in it, in it, where is it? Feminine, referring to the word ghurfatun. So in the room, in other words, in it, there are two windows. In the room, there are two windows. Al Mutariso, Liman Hadani Daftarani. Liman Hadani Daftarani. The teacher asks, Who do these two notebooks belong to? Hadani, we did the word Hada. Hadani is the dual form of it. So, to, uh, these two. So, Hada, this, this one. Hadani, this two, if you were to put it that way. So, who do this two, but we call it in English, these two. Who do these two notebooks, daftarun, daftarani? Who do these two notebooks belong to? Aliun, huma li. Ali replies and he says, huma, those two, meaning daftarani, the two of them, li, they belong to me. So the two of them belong to me. That's the end of page 100. We move on to... Uh, page 101, just to finish the lesson. Al-Mudarrisu liman hatanil 
mistaratani. Liman hatanil mistaratani. So hada and hadihi. If you, okay, we don't exactly have a hadihi uh, right now. Why are we running out of time when we've only been online for 15 minutes? Don't know, was anybody online early? Anyway, nonetheless, we'll end on this point then. Liman hatanil mistaratani. So we did the word hada and hadihi. So we did hadani, but what's the feminine form of uh, hadihi, in other words? So the masculine form is uh, simple, straightforward. Like you could see, uh, hada, hadani. But when it comes to the feminine form, feminine form changes slightly different. So hadihi, not hadihani, for example, if you may be thinking along those lines. So no, the word it becomes uh, hatani. So keep that one uh, down, or in fact, I would say write it down because it's possible you may end up uh, forgetting it. Okay. No, anyway, nonetheless, the word is liman hatani mistaratani. Uh, what is a mistara? Mistaratun. It, we haven't done it, the word before. Simply take this uh, ani away. And then you stick with a big ta, change the big ta into a small ta. It's a feminine word, hence why we needed to use the dual feminine. So, liman hatanil mistaratani. But let's replace mistaratani for a second and say sayaratani. Liman hatani sayaratani, because sayaratun is feminine. <clears throat> Who do these two cars belong to? But mistaratun, mistaratun. The uh, means a ruler. You know, you've got your uh, uh, pen and pencil and your ruler. That ruler is you known as a mistara. Something to make lines with, in other words. So, liman hatanil mistaratani. These two rulers belong. These two rulers belong to who? To who do these two rulers belong? And Yunus uh, speaks up and he says, Huma li, the two of them belong to me. Now, as you remember from our Abdamair uh, class, the dual masculine and feminine are the same. We both use the word huma. Huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna. So, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antunna. So, dual, dual for masculine and feminine. That word of uh, huma and antuma, that one remains the, the same for both masculine and feminine. So, uh, Umali, those two rulers belong to me. So, I'm going to stop on this point here anyway. You know, uh, we've got a number of exercises that, that follows up from this point here for the next uh, few pages anyway. So, we're on page 101. Uh, our, we will continue on Tamarinu exercises. Number one says, Ajib anil asilatil atiati mustamilanil mathna. So answer the following questions using the dual form. So <clears throat> 10, 11 questions are asked, <clears throat> 11 questions are posed to you. You need to answer each of them in a dual form. I'll do the first one for you so that you'll have 10. So Kam kalaman indaka. Kam kalaman indaka. And pay attention because this is your homework following year. So, kam kalaman indaka. How many pens do you have? Singular form. Inda, because it's not obviously part of your body. Kam kalaman indaka. How many pens do you have? So, you will reply by saying, indi. Remember, inda versus li. Indi kalamani. I have two pens. There are two pins by me. That's basically what he's saying. So for the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, for you, all of these uh, you will use, giving the answer for every one of them in the dual form. You're going to give a dual uh, a form answer for all ten following uh, sentences. That will be your homework for next week, inshallah ta'ala. Gives you sufficient time to be able to go over the lesson again. Uh, Check up everything, make sure you understand it so that when you reach your year and you're doing your exercises, you will know what is going on and then uh, you will be able to give the, uh, the answers, inshallah. Like I say, you're welcome to send it during the course of the week. If you know what you are doing, 
Otherwise, you are also welcome to send it in next week, Wednesday, inshallah ta'ala. But until then, we end for now and we say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.